I want to discuss a few techniques for dealing with the challenges of feline dentistry, particularly feline dental extractions. I know a lot of you may have frustrations when attempting and dealing with dental extractions, and I think a lot of it actually comes from problems with the instruments that we choose uh, to use in these procedures. So I'm going to go through a few of the instruments that I prefer during my dental extraction procedures, and I think if you guys learn to use these instruments appropriately, you may find that it can be very helpful for you in a clinical situation. First of all, you, you need to understand that feline dental extractions is really microsurgery. So it requires special instruments beyond what we would typically use for a medium to large size dog. The small cat is a completely different beast, okay? And we need to make sure that we've got the appropriate instruments to deal with the challenges that we're faced with. First of all, I want to talk about magnification, okay? Because I consider feline dental extractions to be a microsurgery, the magnifying loops can be an extremely helpful tool. Okay, and what this is going to allow you to do is see some of the microanatomies that you're going to encounter during dental extractions in cats. You can find these through any distributor. They are fairly affordable, and they'll pay for themselves when you find that it's going to make you more efficient in your surgical procedures, and it's going to reduce some of the chances of complications. So I feel that every surgeon that's performing feline dental extractions should have a good pair of magnifying loops. I use a two and a half magnification. That's probably the, uh, probably the most universal type of magnification that you could have in a magnifying loop. Some people would prefer stronger mag magnification, such as a three and a half to four and a half strength, but I prefer the two and a half. It also gives me a little bit wider field of view. So, Looking at the different instruments that we use, uh, something that's very important is to have a very small elevator, okay? So there are now dental elevators that are made and manufactured specifically for feline teeth. And this is one of the keys. You can see that this elevator is very small. The typical smallest elevator that you would have in an assortment pack would be considered a size one, okay? This one is even smaller than that. And this elevator I use for about 75 to 80 percent of the feline extractions that I perform. Okay, only in a few teeth, such as the canines, the mandibular molar mesial root, and the maxillary fourth premolar distal root, would you need a larger size elevator, such as your typical winged elevator in a size two or three. So for all the dental extractions we perform in cats, we only need the very small feline dental elevator, as well as possibly your typical winged sizes one, two, and three. But I can tell you again that this small special feline elevator I will use in 75 to 80 percent of the feline dental extractions. And it's going to help you in reducing the numbers and frequencies of complications, especially root fracture during extraction procedures. Next I want to talk about the extraction forceps. This is an extraction forceps that actually has a parallel beak, okay? So it grasps the crown of the tooth with both of the ends in a parallel fashion. A typical or standard type of extraction forceps comes together at an angle with beaks that only touch at the tips. The problem with that is it puts the pressure at one spot on the tooth, on the crown, and it's gonna lead to more crown fractures as you apply force during the extraction process. So a nice pair of parallel beak extraction forceps is going to help prevent extraction complications such as fracturing the crowns. If you do run into complications, a small root tip pick can be a helpful tool. And I have one of these in all of my feline extraction packs as well as the, the canine extraction packs. This is a very fine and sharp instrument. It's also a very dangerous instrument. So it's extremely important that when you're using it, you use it properly and you, that you do not apply a lot of force towards the tooth in an apical direction, okay? Because that's when we run into a lot of complications is forcing an elevator or a sharp instrument such as this into the mandibular canal, the nasal cavity, or even worse, potentially the eyeball. 
So when using a root tip pick, it's important to not apply force forward, but to only work this into the periodontal ligament space 360 degrees around the root, trying to slowly weaken that periodontal ligament around the root tip, but without applying a lot of force apically. If you do apply any force apically at all, always have a finger rest or finger stop on the instrument so that if it does slip, you're going to prevent it from penetrating into tissues where you don't want it to be. Next, I'm going to talk about thumb forceps. Okay, I use a very small, a very fine DeBakey thumb forceps. This is much different than a larger, heavy serrated type of Adson Brown forceps. This is considered a um, DeBakey style forceps. It's got very soft or non-aggressive type of serrated tip. And the advantage of using this in feline surgery is that feline gingiva and mucosa is very fragile. And this is going to reduce some of the trauma to the tissue. And you're going to have improved healing when you use this type of instrument and reducing some of the unnecessary types of stresses and damage to the tissue. A fine periosteal elevator is also very helpful. And this one is made specifically for dogs and cats. I use this in small dogs. I use this in cats. It's got two ends. One is smaller than the other. This is the larger size. And it's a periosteal elevator. This instrument is for lifting the mucogingival flaps during a surgical extraction or following an extraction to create a flap for closure. So a small or fine periosteal elevator is a definite necessary piece of equipment for any feline extraction pack. This is a, a very fine tissue for or a tissue scissors, a fine tissue scissors. Specifically, it's called a Lagrange scissors. That's the style. It's got a double curve to it, which provides some increased ergonomics when working in the mouth. It has a serrated blade on one edge, so that helps when trying to cut through some of the dense or tough gingival tissue. And it allows us to make fine cuts and excisions in the tissue as well as releasing underneath the flap during a periosteal release. And then finally, a very fine needle holder is important for working in the mouth of a cat. You don't want to apply and use the type of needle holder you'd use for a, a spay or a general surgical procedure in a large or medium sized dog. This is a very small, this is even less than four inch, I believe this is a three and a half, anywhere from a three and a half to four and a half inch size needle holder would be acceptable for working in small dogs and cats in oral surgery. I do not prefer the type that has a scissors that's also part of the needle holder uh, because you can inadvertently cut the suture periodically and that can be a costly mistake. So this is just your typical Mayo style needle holder but a very small fine tip. I think if you use these instruments you'll find that you're going to reduce some of your complications and frustrations that you have in feline dental extractions.